Hey guys, uh, this is Amit. Uh, today I'm gonna um, create a tutorial on how to um, set up SSL um, or the HTTPS on CentOS. Okay, first of all, um, in order to set up HTTPS, we need to make sure that the Apache is installed. Uh, let's just do a quick test. Uh, grep -i HTTPD. All right, the HTTPD package is not installed. Uh, if you guys follow my channel, um, there's a video tutorial on how to install Apache. So uh, just follow that tutorial. I'm just gonna do this real quick. All right, so in the background, I just installed the uh, HTTPD package. Um, so let's check that. Okay, all right, so if I do the service HTTPD start, uh, the HTTPD uh, service is running here. Um, so it's running, right? Um, but um, I mean, just so as you know, you can check the um, the HTTP, uh, HTTPD, the Apache, um, you know, can serve um, the web on port 80 or the um, HTTP and the port 443, which is the HTTPS, All right? So um, the port 80 uh, is the HTTP and the port 443 is the HTTPS, right? So um, we can we can check which ports um, the Apache is listening on by issuing a command net stat minus two pan, and then you can just do um, you know what, let me just show it in the command line. So um, you can actually type netstat, netstat minus tupn uh, to pan, uh, grep minus i http. So if you look here, the, um, the Apache is listening on all the IP addresses on port 80, right? And this is the process ID, uh, this is the name Apache, and it's listening, right? So um, it's not listening on 443, which is the HTTPS or the SSL. So uh, now we are going to configure HTTPS. Okay. So in order for us to uh, do that, we need to install yum install um, the mode underscore SSL package. Let's, let's wait. Okay. So it's installing the mode SSL. Okay, now if I restart the HTTPD and run the netstat command again, you will see that it's listening on 443 now, right? Okay, so it's listening on HTTPS as well. Now let's go ahead and look at the configuration file. So you guys are familiar that the HTTP main configuration is this file at the Etsy HTTPD conf, HTTPD.conf, right? So for the um, SSL, it's usually, I mean, by default, it's in the conf.d and in the ssl.conf file. So let's go ahead and open that file. All right, uh, you know what? Let me just do a uh, VIM real quick. I'm just installing VIM so that it highlights the um, directives. It's easier to see it that way. Couple more seconds here. All right, so we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to Etsy profile and then what I'm gonna do is, uh, you know what, let me do VI Etsy Bass RC. Uh, I'm just going to, um, you know, um, create an alias uh, VI equals VIM so that, you know, uh, it, um, I don't have to type VIM, it'll just um, do the VI Etsy stdbdconf.dssl.conf. Okay, now it, it highlights the keyword and it, it's easy to see. 
So the first thing you notice here is that it is loading the mode underscore SSL.so, which is a shared object. It's like the shared library. This, this came from when we installed the mode underscore SSL package. The listen 443 directive tells the Apache to listen on the um, 443 port. All right, I'm just gonna uh, go over the important uh, directives. All right, uh, we're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna talk about that. All right, so now let's look at this. Um, so the virtual host, it's just like configuring the regular Apache. But, um, you know, this virtual host, the default one, comes with the Apache when you install the mode SSL. Right? Okay. Now let's go further down here. Let me scroll it all the way. All right. So this is the default error log for the SSL. Uh, this is the transfer log. I mean, the access log. Now, the other directive, SSL engine on, turns the SSL on. And then the SSL protocol all minus SSL v2. So what it is doing is it is enabling all the SSL protocols but disabling the version 2. Uh, it's doing that because the SSL v2 at the time when this Apache was probably compiled was known to be vulnerable. But now as of today, the SSL v3 is, um, is um, known to be vulnerable as well. So in order to secure, uh, you would want to um, you would want to do this. Um, you, what you can do is um, uh, you can just minus all and then plus TLS v1 and uh, plus uh, you know what actually um, you can just do uh, all minus SSL v2 and minus ssl v, uh, v3 okay so that way ssl v2 and v3 are disabled all right so now uh, the next thing is the ssl cipher suite so whatever the you know ciphers are used for encryption so here also you can disable like the low um, low cipher suit and stuff like that that would come under Apache security and I can talk about that probably in a later video when we can you know we reach there uh, about the securing the Apache. Watch out for my you know uh, videos. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, and now for the SSL, uh, just to give you a little background here. Um, what happens is uh, the server has a certificate file. If you look at here, this is the certificate file. This is like the public uh, key, if you will. The When the browser requests a HTTPS page, the Apache gives this, serves it, this file, and then the client or the browser uses this certificate to encrypt the data and send it to the sender request to the server. The server has this key file, which it uses to decrypt the um, request, and then it's going to encrypt the um, message again, and then send it to the client, where the client will use the certificate to decrypt the message again. So, anything in between the server and the client are encrypted, and does you know if someone is capturing the packets in between or the sniffing the network are not able to. Uh, see any meaningful messages like in the HTTPD, uh, HTTP, you would just see the plain text messages back and forth. All right, so you got to remember the certificate file, the SSL certificate file and the key file. Those are the keywords that you use to specify where the certificate is located and the key file is located. All right, uh, let's go down, further down, and then uh, that is just some regular other settings. And then uh, there's another one that says the custom log, the SSL request log. It's just another log, you know, which is used to um, store the access log. Okay, so that's it. And then the virtual host is going to close. This is the default virtual host configuration. So now if I go and uh, browse the page, let's say, okay. I'm just going to say HTTPS 192.168.100.51. It says that the connection is untrusted, right? Um, it's because the certificate is not signed by a digital signing authority. There are certain certificate signing authorities out there who are trusted and authorized to sign these certificates. 
they'll verify some information and then they'll certify the certificate so so that you know uh, the warnings are not generated when you use those kind of certificates now you just click on the understand the risk and you add an exception i'm just gonna do the uh, temporary exception and then you get this page now if you click on this icon here the lock sign you can do this on any https website and then you will uh, get this message now you can uh, view more information and then you can click on view certificate so now you see that the uh, certificate uh, the common name or the name of the server is local host or local domain some organization some organizational unit and all that information okay and it has all the expiration date and so forth all right so the https worked so now if we wanted to configure a website which supports https um let's say we're going to do the example.com the you know regular example.com so what you can do is um you're going to see virtual host right star colon 443 all right and then you can see the server name it's just like the regular um i usually like to close the tags as soon as i open server name um it can be um www.example.com right and then the server server admin um admin at example.com and then the document root var www.html example.com it's just like configuring the regular um http based website um that is it for the basic configuration i mean you can watch my apache http uh, based uh, tutorial for more information on that uh, i was like why is it white I, there was a typo okay let's see uh regular check the syntax okay it says the default okay there's another thing to note it says the virtual host overlap on port 443 the first has precedence right like we talked in the apache uh, http uh, regular http tutorial you have to enable the name based hosting that you can do with v vi at c httpd conf um, dot d ssl dot con and then you can just say um name virtual host star colon 443 we used to do that uh, for port 80 right so now we're going to do the same for ssl httpd minus t so okay httpd minus t now it is saying it is saying that the uh the document root does not exist right yeah because we don't have anything yet so let's go ahead and create uh, the directory uh, var wwhtml example.com right okay and then let's create a file in there example.com slash index.html so we're gonna say uh, welcome to my first https uh, or the ssl website right okay let me close the h1 tag all right let's now check the syntax okay don't worry about this or cannot uh, reliably determine the server's fully qualified domain for name for now because the host name is not a fully qualified domain name so it's complaining about that now um let's let's see service httpd restart right okay something's wrong here mar log httpd error log server should be ssl aware okay i'm sorry about that yep so we missed the most important thing right we forgot to tell which certificate and key file to use right okay for ww oh, all right sorry about that it's httpd.conf.d ssl.conf like i told you in the beginning that those are the most important keywords and then i forgot to uh, type that in all right so what we are gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna let's just copy it here all right and then i'm going here all right so i'm pasting that we don't need the comments so i'm just deleting them so the difference between the uh, non-https and the https website is that you are going to tell the 
uh, uh, web server, the Apache, that you are going to have to use this key file and the certificate file. Also, um, you know what? Let's just verify if it works now. Service HTTPD restart. Okay, it's still failing. I, it's, I know what it is, but I just wanted to confirm. Uh, before that, we need to do SSL engine on, right? Service HTTPD restart. All right, that was it. So um, let's go back to the configuration file. So the most important things that you need to, you need to turn the SSL engine on and you need to specify the certificate and the key at the minimum. Right, and the rest of the configuration is the same as the regular HTTP. All right, so now let's go ahead and and then uh, so now in order to we said that the server name is the www.example.com, but you know um, that DNS probably points to something else. So in order for us to browse that with using the name, we need to tell our host file uh, that the 192.168.100.51 is the address for www.example.com. So ping www.example.com and then okay, all right. So now let me install a, a you know quick and dirty text browser real quick. Install uh, links. Okay. Yeah. This is a command line browser. You can just you know for quick checks. Well, I like it. All right, so so links is https www.example.com. Okay, so the SSL error was most likely because it's a self-signed certificate and you have to accept the you know exception. So we'll tie it in a um, browser here. Okay, here, but. This machine is different from the Unix machine, right? So uh, even though we have the um, host file set up here for the example.com, but the, the Windows machine that I'm using here with the browser does not know that the example.com belongs there, right? So I've got to edit my host file before uh, the uh, my machine resolves to that IP address. Give me a second here. All right, this is my um, host file for my Windows machine. So I'm going to tell it that 192.168.100.51 is www.example.com, all right? I want to save this file. It's uh, yeah. Okay. And then let's see. Uh if I do a ping ping www.example.com, it's going to return that IP address. So we're good to go. Now let's try the https www.example.com. All right, this was causing the links, the command line browser to not open the website. I understand the risk, the exception. I'm just going to do it one time. And then see, we have the welcome to my first SSL website. And then it's using the certificate, right? It's using the same certificate because we haven't created a certificate yet. It's using the same certificate. And then the connection between the, um, the, um, Browser and the server is encrypted, so it's a secure one. Even though it's a self-signed certificate, as long as you trust the certificate that someone hasn't tampered with, you know that the certificate is yours. It's good. I mean, you don't have to have the um, digitally signed uh, certificate by the trusted authority if you are using it for your own purposes, but you don't want to use the self-signed certificate in your customer-facing website. <laughs> it's going to annoy everyone, and then. They'll, that'll make the customers, you know, doubt um, your um, website. I mean, come on, you know. So that's how you configure the SSL website. So you know, the same way you can configure multiple multiple websites, just like you did for the uh, uh, HTTP. And then you can have the certificate and the key file, different key files and certificates for each host, right? So uh, that's how you do it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. You learned something from here. I'm going to come up with the next video. I'm going to uh, come up with, um, you know, I'm in generating the self-signed certificate so that you can create different certificates for your different website. Um, so you can do the self-signed certificate. Okay. All right, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, just see you in the next video. All right. Bye.